guys, I am working my way through these challenge locks. This is from Steve in Guernsey. I got a little mummified key. It's kind of cool because uh, this is not shrink wrap. It looks like some kind of tape. Looks very much like the handles from the Rare Elements picks, but it's just tape. But we do have a key, and it is a Yale key to go with this Yale lock. Pretty pericentric. It'd be nice to be able to get in there. Um, that first pin looks like it's been modified a little bit to go all the way down to that ledge. That ought to be a little bit of fun. That's already pre-cut, so I don't have to do that. Easy to get into. All we got to do is get it picked. Uh, the top of it is threaded with plugs, as you see. We got some, looks like some scotch tape on there to keep me from monkeying around with those plugs. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick this thing open. So let me get it mounted up, and let's see what kind of damage we can do to Steve's lock. Get under there. Oh. All right, guys, I got nothing. Let me turn this thing off. Oh. All right, that's one hour on this lock. I have nothing from, I didn't even get very much of a fault set on this thing. I still have the key right here. So, Steve, uh, you with me. I don't know what to tell you. There's got to be some kind of secret technology here. I, I'm frustrated beyond belief. <laughs> All right. Um, usually I at least get a fault set. It gives me a half of a hope of getting into it. But this one didn't. I got nothing from it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this key. Give me a knife here real quick. <laughs> oh, and I think I know why. All right, let's take, let's make sure it works. That way I can, eh, it works perfectly. No grabbing, no nothing. It works just very smooth. Um, this key, though, I've got to tell you, Let's take a look at this guy. I mean, this is kind of what I would expect to see on a challenge lock. Some very high cut pins hiding behind some very low cut pins, which will make it really hard for me to get inside of there. Um, this is a perfect example of taking advantage of a paracentric keyway. Now, what I have here on my finger, this is the pick I ultimately ended up using because it was the largest pick that I could get into this keyway. I tried getting a postal hook in there, but it just wouldn't fit inside of there. So I'm stuck with this one. This is the SS Dev Deep Hook. Now let's look at this key. When you're picking this, I can't go any lower than the bottom of the keyway, which of course is right there. So I'll put my, I'll put this just, see if we can make this work. Put this just like that. Just kind of hold it with my finger, just like that. So when I slide this in the keyway, I'm barely clearing that pin. So I'm no problem there. I can reach in there and I can probably pick that one and that one without oversetting this guy. But now when you take a look at this one, both this cut and that cut right there are both cut well below the minimum standards. Now let's take this pick and a very deep one. Now I'm going to try to set that last pin. Now watch what happens with the shaft of that pick. Right away, because we've exceeded the maximum cut, the pick starts oversetting that pin, and I haven't even come close to setting that pick, that pin in the very back. By the time I get up there to pick him to the maximum height, I've exceeded that by a lot. I've overset that pin, which I think Steve probably knows all about so i've got to say this lock was because of the, of the extreme cuts this lock is a physical impossibility it, this is like asking me to run a marathon at my age it's just 
just not going to happen. Um, there was no way to get this lock open, given this overly deep cut here. Um, I just look on this as, for lack of a better term, it's just not not a fair challenge. Now, I've never I hate rules. I hate it. I hate it, applying rules, and I'm not going to apply rules in this lock, Steve. You whip me. This is the first time this has really come up. Um, in a challenge lock, so you will get a whipped by pack lock. So not a problem there. But I think in the future we need to look at this, and I, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, I'd hate to think that anybody that just simply exceeds the cut so that I can't access that would get a challenge lock, because what few I have left would go very, very quickly. The whole idea of challenge locks is so that hopefully manufacturers and hobbyists, other lock pickers can see some of the unique ideas you've come up with. Some of the weird looking pins, some of the chamber designs, some of the little tricks that you guys have thrown in to improve overall security of all locks for, for manufacturers, for the industry, and of course for hobbyists. If we declare that overly deep cuts that exceed all the limits is a fair challenge lock, then everybody will do only that. So with only a two-pin lock, you guys can whip me every single time, and we're going to be out of it. But tell me what you think. Do you believe that this is a fair challenge? If so, I'll give away every lock I have until they're all gone, and that's just the way it'll be. But uh, I just don't feel like... I'm not even going to gut this lock because it was never... I never got anything out of it. I can't tell you what was in it because I believe that that last pin was probably the first one that I would have had to pick, but I believe I probably overset number five every single time so I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna gut this thing it's a perfectly functional lock no question about it but there's no way to pick it given the limitations on the tools that we have we ever get a pick with an extendable tip maybe I'll give this thing another go anyway guys appreciate your time stay safe stay legal Steve your lock is in the mail thanks guys mm -hmm.